Hi there and welcome to Busternet. This is the channel where I talk about Football Manager and on today's show, we are going to do a little tactical session about movement. Yes, movement of players on and off the ball, how certain roles might influence the movement, um, how do you create space, how do you attack space, but more specifically, I'm looking at a, an instruction that sometimes can be confusing for people. It's the move into channels instruction. Now, the move into channels instruction, if you were to go into the game, you will see some players have moved into instruction. Other players don't even have the option for you to choose move into channels. So what exactly is move into channels as an instruction? Here, move into channel asks players, particularly attack-minded players, to find vertical spaces between opponents and pull away in such a manner that a teammate can find them with a pass, which in turn draws a defender out of position. Okay, so... What does this statement actually mean? Uh, if you look at the description, it says it asks players, particularly attack-minded players. So it's very specific. Uh, it doesn't cover every single role in the game, just specific roles in the game. It tells them to find the vertical spaces between opponents, pull away from them, so that they can, they can be found with a pass. So it means that the player is going to run into the spaces between the furthest fullback and the central defender, Try and draw the central defender away for a pass to for someone to deliver the pass to him. It also means that when he has the ball, there's a chance that he's going to run into the space where the fullback that that channel that exists. So, what is a channel in the game of uh, in Football Manager? Now, channels really are the uh, if you look at uh, you got horizontal channels and you got vertical channels in football, right? So the uh, exist when you know you've got these spaces between players they're not re it's not really like a sp uh, demarcation on the pitch I've, I've done a half space exp uh, explanation a long time ago if you want to know what half spaces are there's a video on my channel about the half space but here this is a horizontal channel in uh, football now this is the space between um, the full backs uh, the, the defense and the midfield so if you are looking at a team the blue team with the space between the defending uh, the defenders the fullbacks the central defenders and the midfield the two midfielders now this is what we would call a horizontal uh, horizontal channel so um, in the old days when we had a 442 tactic we had 442 versus playing a 442 uh, this would be a channel so it over eventually over time the number 8 some teams found that it's better for us to try and control some of these channels by asking our players to move vertically into this uh, into channels so we, we they might drop into the horizontal channel to, to draw uh, players away from them or to make it easier for their own players to pass the ball to them so like the number 8 would sometimes drop into the space uh, the horizontal channel and we would get a situation where now he's more free and um, he's available for the pass. So the teams had to react to this change because we had the 4 4 2. Uh, 4 4 2 could do this. So uh, tactics started evolving. Uh, we had the, uh, I think the one of the tactics that came up was uh, to counter this was the 4 1 4 1, even the 4 2 3 1. So now if the 8 wanted to drop in, some teams would change to a 4 2 3 1. So they put an AMC now there. So you couldn't really take advantage of the horizontal spaces anymore. So bang, we've got this player coming in. Uh, and uh, now uh, we're, we're stepping in and we are giving you a problem. So now you actually have the red team uh, playing with 1, 2, 3, 4. Four channels. They're playing in four horizontal channels. So these are the horizontal channels. Now, uh, this is uh, slightly different from the vertical channels. Now, the vertical channels are actually not, uh, like I said earlier, it's not this on, in, in football, the zone itself is called the half space, right? So that area is the half space. But the channel is actually a moving uh, area on the pitch because uh, it's really against the team that you're playing against. So it is uh, channel is the space that exists between the fullback and the nearest central defender. So if you are playing narrow, the channel becomes smaller. So it's not a physical boundary in the space. It's actually the space between players. Uh, when you when you are telling a team to uh, you're telling a player to explore or move into a channel, you're literally telling a player when you have the ball, run to that channel, take the ball to that channel. Some roles are, are hard coded to behave in a certain way because you're telling those roles. Okay, I when you when we don't have the ball, uh, sorry sorry when we have the ball, I want you to move into this channel. Like for example, Mazala operates in those channels. 
Uh, some roles, uh, you don't you don't specifically tell them. You, I want you to stay in the channel. The winger, for example, the winger doesn't have an instruction that says move in the channels because it doesn't make any sense. So you've got this, and uh, what you will what you will typically see is certain players will uh, start moving into these channels. So a number nine who's been told to have moved into channels will move into the ch space where those where the five and two are playing, and then eleven if he's told to move into channels he will move into the space where the five and two are playing. Similarly, if a twelve is given the instruction to move into the channel he will move into the space where the number opposite number three and six are playing. Does this mean that when number ten has the ball, okay, and you've given eleven, nine, and twelve move into channels? Does it mean that all these players are going to go into the spaces? No, that doesn't. It doesn't mean that. Now, this is the problem with moving the channels as an instruction. It's not perfect in the game. Um, it is an instruction that tells players to find vertical spaces between opponents and pull away in such a manner that a teammate can find them with a pass. Right? So that it means that that player, when you, you, number 10 is the ball, you are expecting number 9, number 11, and number 12 to move into the spaces. But there's decision-making in the game. There's a certain logic in the game. Roles play in a certain way. So there's a lot of little things under the hood that we may not be, uh, we may not be aware of. Like, for example, if you take three players up top and you, and you tell them all to be advanced forwards, right? Does this mean that all three of them are going to run into the house pieces? You have clumped up players hanging about. Uh, sometimes when you 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 might see little movement patterns where they start moving in the, those directions. But if the ball is on the left flank, you don't you won't see the advance forward on the right flank running to the space on the other side. You will see the advance forward move into a central area to become a goal scoring threat. So. You gotta be very careful. Move into channels. It is not you, you don't won't see move into channels becoming an instruction that passes the red C. We had that issue in CMO three or four. Move into channels is dependent on the formation that you play against. So if you got a four four two, you could have a narrow channel. You could have a wide channel. Depends on the defensive shape of a team. And then if you're playing against a uh, three five two or a three five a three of if you're playing against a 3 4 1 2 3 4 3 5 3 2, then the channel is actually quite big. Potentially, it can be very big because here the channel now becomes a space, right? So the wing back is high up the pitch, and then you've got the DM or the central defender. So the gap can be quite big depending on how wide the team is. So, so you, you've got to think about roles and duties, and you've got to think about the PI. So there are. This is where things get really, really complicated in a sense because um, there are some attacking roles that move into the channels. There are some attacking roles that don't move into the channels. There are some attacking roles like I love the poacher now. The poacher is one of my favorite roles in the whole game, along with the target man, because the target man has is told not to move into the channels. So you got a target man that doesn't. I mean, a target man can be told to move into the channels if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he can be told to move into the channels, but he can have the option of not moving into the channels. And the other role is the poacher because now these, these are the only two roles I can think of that have this ability for you to choose move into the channels please or don't move into the channels because you've got to think about how these players are not going to operate so you got if you have a target man he's going to hold still he's not going to run off into the channels but now you got a poacher who can be told to move into the channel so the target man holds on to the uh, wins the ball holds his position the poacher can play off him can receive the ball or he can go wide drawing a central defender away and then when he draws a central defender when he draws a central defender away you can have somebody coming through the middle i wish i had three hands but i don't so uh so you you have plenty of options here so if you if you look at move into channels and as an instruction you've got to remember to look at the players who have been given this instruction and you've got to look at the roles as well here my poacher has been given a move into channels instruction we're playing with a four five one um Note how this player, who's the poacher, he's going to drop. He's going to start moving in these kind of directions when he doesn't have the ball. So he moves out wide, takes up the channel. It's a very narrow channel. And then he pulls away, pulls the central defender away and allows the Mazala to come in to score the goal. Here we have the ball and we are attacking. Our um, DLP has the ball. The poacher has already moved into the channel that exists between the central defender and the fullback. He starts to pull away. Here you want to be careful because um, when, you, when you give a player with good acceleration the move into channels instruction, there's a strong possibility that if he has poor anticipation, he might get offside, which is kind of very common if, you, if you're not paying attention.
move into channels, the instruction itself, you will see it uh, when you are attacking and that specific player has the ball. You, you shouldn't be expecting to see move into channels like if you if you had like a poacher and an advance and both of them had moved into channels and then your team is attacking you don't expect both of them to go like this because it makes absolutely no sense in fact that's what used to happen in the old days uh, back in cm 304 days uh we had uh we could part the red sea with defenses because we had uh, two super tactics uh, in fm scramjet and diablo and both of them worked on the principle of splitting defenses up you know because we we back then we didn't have so many uh, we didn't have roles right so um so SI changed the way the game uh, worked uh, we, by introducing roles. So behavior of players uh, with the ball would be dictated by certain PIs. Uh, then sometimes with uh, there are certain PIs that affect them when they don't have when you are attacking and that player doesn't have the ball. And then you have uh, roles and uh, the specific roles of a player which will dictate where he operates on the pitch and how he moves on the pitch. Like for example, the Mazala, he operates in the half spaces. So he, does he move in the channels? He's already in the channel. Then you've got the winger, uh, he's out wide or he, he he's out wide and um, he's operating what would seem to, to look like he's in a channel as well. But honestly, he's already playing on the flanks. So he's, he, he can easily get confused. What, what about the inside forward? He starts from the channel. Right, so and then he cuts inside. Uh, so things like this, um, there, are, there are a lot of roles that work in specific ways. So when you're looking at move into channels, just pay attention to the fact that when you give move into channels to a specific player, when you are attacking and the ball is at the feet of that player, an AF for example, there is a possibility that he is going to move into the channel between the defender and the fullback. So this will have the effect of drawing the central defender away from the heart of the defense, creating space for other players to attack. Here we're deep in our own half, uh, and we're about to launch a counter attack. Smythe is going to move into this area. That is the channel that he's supposed to be in. So he goes wide, draws players away, create, and you when you have players operating like this, moving into the channels, you want to make sure that you have players who are attacking the box, good off the ball, who can come into the box and come, come and uh, you know take advantage of the movement created by that one player who's moving into the channel. I personally don't like to have too many players who move into the channel. Sometimes I, I do, um, especially for the more complicated systems that I might create where I have a few players who move into the channels. But that really becomes um, difficult to manage and you really need a good team. Um, you also have to pay a lot of attention to the transitions to see if everybody is doing what you expect them to do. Sometimes it can be a hell, it's, it can be very difficult. So the, the logic here when you use move into channels is pretty straightforward. You just want to make sure that when you ask a player to move into channels, you also have players who are attacking the space vacated by the player who was in that area in the first place. So if he's a poacher, he's supposed to be in the middle. Now when he gets the ball, he's going to drift out wide. So when he drifts out wide, is there somebody else taking advantage of it? Does the player, will the poacher have support? Because if he's going to drift out wide, he's going to be by himself. So he needs somebody up there to take advantage of uh, him having the ball. So the po so your player who's moving into the channel, may you, you have to look out for two things. One, um, he might be caught offside. Yeah, so he needs good anticipation. He needs good first touch balance, right? He also needs other players near him. So you, you, if you give a player a uh, move into the channel's instruction and he's got defend duties behind him, good luck to him. He's, he's, he's just going to hold up the ball and probably get tackled and say la vie. You know, that's, you know, you just, 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 I don't know what to say, man. That's really bad. <laughs> so, so what you want to do is when you make tactics, you just have to make sure that when you use the move into channel's instruction, it is well thought out. This is very interesting. This is why I... Well, I'm such a big fan of adapting my tactics. Uh, move into channels as an instruction or move into channels as an element of the game of football is really in relation to the system that you're playing against. So if you're playing against a narrow system, it's a narrow channel. If you're playing against a wide system, it's a wide channel. If you're playing against a 4-4-2, it can be a narrow channel. If you're playing against a 5-3-2, it can be a humongous channel. If 
because uh, it all depends on how how the wing backs are set up. If the wing backs are set up with on attack duty, that's a huge huge cha channel. You're playing as a three four three. There's virtually a, a, a gargantuan channel between the um, central defender and the ML or MR. So these are things that we need to bear in mind when we're using our when we play our tactics because uh, movement of your players is going to be dictated by not only your tactic and the instructions that you choose, but the system that you're playing against. So now I'm going to ex explain how I extract value from half spaces. Okay, first up, we have to understand who these players are. We've got a role here called the Mazala. The Mazala is a player that explores half spaces. So he's going to also run through, through the channel. So he's, you can expect to see the Mazala step into this tier, which is one channel. And he will also attack the space between the fullback and the defender, which is one of the reasons why the Mazala is called a half space. You know, he's, he explores the half spaces. So he's going to, he's like a quasi winger inside forward. So we, we can expect him to enter this area. Now, we're also using a target man. Now here, the target man doesn't have a move into channels instruction. So I don't want him to be running off to the flanks. I do not want him anywhere near that because I need him anchored in a certain area of the pitch so that he becomes a target for uh, players to play off. Now, the attacking playmaker on attack has also been, to been told not to move into the channels because I don't need so many players moving in the channels because we are playing a very attacking mentality. We want to move the ball quickly. We only really have one player running off doing this, moving into the channels. Uh, because what we really want to see is this player becoming a goal-scoring threat. Yes, the idea here is all about using this player to become a goal-scoring threat. Now, this is pre pretty... Uh, pretty one-dimensional because it can only work under certain conditions and this condition that we we actually met this condition in our match against Burnley in the uh, League Cup so in they scored the goal in the 21st minute we managed to score from a goal kick by taking advantage of these half spaces now here you can see uh, how our team has been set up we've got target man here we expect him not to um, basically uh, run off to the flanks. But we expect Aisa to be running this way in the, during the course of the match. We also expect the Mazala to be think, exploring this area over here. Right? So he's going to be exploring all these areas because uh, this wing back, this uh, midfielder will have to come out wide to help defend. We've got a fullback on attack playing with the overlap instruction which essentially makes him go further forward. Right, he's because his men starting mentality is now going to be much higher. So what we expect to see, because we're we're playing against this team with a narrow setup, is this player is going to start moving all the way here. We're also going to see this player move around here. We might see this player run this way if the need arises. Otherwise, he's going to stick to his primary purpose of getting staying on the shoulder of the last player and attacking the box. So as he plays the ball. He plays the ball out to Lacey. Notice what this player does and this player do. Okay. Keely is now going to move forward. Cockerline, the target man, is, is going to try and... The target is, of course, the target man. Um, he doesn't hold the ball, but Healy is going to move this way. So Healy moves into the house. He's moving into the channel that's... Uh, the channel that is uh, between the ML right now and the, wi the widest uh, central defender who's already out of position. And this guy is coming in. So the Mazala has moved in, occupies one defender. This guy is now free. So if we've occupied one of the defenders, this guy gets away and he manages to score. This, is inten this was intentional because we wanted us to create a system that would attack the spaces left behind using move into channels, but not with everybody. Because if I had, if I had the, this player playing with a move into channels and structure, he would have gone this way. And he would have pulled this defender out with him, or he would have pulled this player out with him, and then we would have met a few more players on Matty Folds. So my goal here was pretty simple. I did not want this player to have a move into channels instruction. Instead, I wanted him to become a pivot, or a kind of a uh, static pivot that would redirect play or get the ball to move into and onto players who are in more dangerous positions. So as you can see, once again, you get the Mazala moving into the channel. You got this guy now running this way because he doesn't need to move the channel because the focus of the play has changed and Matty Foles comes in to score. So this is a very simple example of how you, I deliberately take advantage of a 3-4-3. In the game of uh, Football Manager, the 3-4-3 is the... the I, I love playing against any three-man defense because three-man defenses are notoriously 
uh, weak at defending the half spaces. So even though they have the extra defender, it's not really difficult uh, to beat a 3-4-1-2 or a 3-5-2 or a 3-4-3, uh, especially if they, they tend to be a bit more attacking in orientation. The more important thing to understand is what the roles and duties are and how they influence the play. The AF is a very interesting role, right? So here, the AF actually starts out with uh, get further forward and move into channels. Now move, move into channels, yeah, we know what it does now, right? Fullback, the central defender. Guess what? This is the only one that can do this. Stay wider. Whoa, what does this mean? Wait, check this out. Now you can make it even more annoying. Run away with the ball. So now the AF not only moves into the channels, right? He will stay wider when, he doesn't, when you, your team doesn't have the ball. Check out the description of stay wider. Stay wider encourages players, primarily those in wide areas to the pitch, to stay as close to the touchline as possible in a bit to stretch the game over the full width of the playing surface. So they'll be in a bit of a wider position. They move into the channels, which is the space between the central defender and the fullback, which doesn't make any sense now. And then you tell them to run wide with the ball. So... I hope you have a very good AF for this role because if I were to tell a player to do this, if somebody were to tell me, I want you to stay wider, I want you to move into the channels and I want you to run wide with the ball. And I'm going to go, huh? How is that even possible? So the AF can be, a conf can be a very dodgy role if you don't watch what you're doing in the AF. So I tend to try and avoid this. So if you want him to run wide with the ball, you know what you're doing, right? AF, move into the channels, starts by occupying the central defender of football and then runs wide with the ball. AF will stay wider. He stays wider in the transition phases. And then after that, he runs between the fullback and the central defender in a bit to occupy them, which is a bit of a... He also he starts wide and then he runs into the space. Uh, and it's better in this particular case for me to choose a player who also has the player trait. So I get like double insurance. So in this particular case, I will tell him to stay wider. And then he's got the personal trait of uh, where are my player traits? Okay, yes, cut, cuts inside from both wings. So, so you you gotta we gotta look at the roles and understand what they do. The F nine now, in FM nineteen when we started FM nineteen, this role had a very funny situation. I mean, a very funny thing. He started out with moving the channels. I mean, I there were quite a number of us who made a lot of noise about this because if he moves into the channels. The F9 will start and then he will run off to the flanks. What we wanted was F9s, generally what we want to see is them start from deeper positions, occupy the deeper positions. Uh, we don't want them to play like the Shadow Striker, but we also don't want them to be sitting between the two central defenders, right? The fullback and the central defender. We want them to actually drop a bit deeper. So the move into channels was then removed. We, it's now we have the option of choosing it. But what's interesting about this is once you click the move into the channels, you can't tell him to stay wide. So you can't use an F9 to stretch the defense, which makes a lot of sense because you shouldn't have... We don't want our F9 to be all the way on the flanks, right? So we want the F9 to be in a more central position. And then we want him to... Uh, if you want him to move into channels, then, you know, fullback and central defender. Uh, really, my personal... Uh, the way I play my false nine is I remove move into the channels and I... Choose a player with good decision-making anticipation of the ball. Right, so then I leave the player to decide what he's supposed to do because they are, this, play, this role plays hard-coded. But then you got to think about, is an F9 suitable for a 3 4 3 one, two? I personally don't like using an F9 or 4 3 one, two. I mean, I haven't really used it much because my head says I've already got one guy here. Why the hell do I want a second guy here? Maybe to keep the ball a bit more effectively. So this guy could actually become a shadow striker. So now i got F9 who's not moving into the channels, who's dropping deep. We've got Shadow Striker waiting to run into the box because he's going to have move into channels. I've got Mazala into the half spaces. i got this guy. So the F9 now has got players running off him. In Football Manager, move into channels still needs a bit of work. It's not a perfect little system because you've got the horizontal channel that hasn't been dealt with very well. Um, so we got the vertical channel, which is pretty clear. But the horizontal channels and how we control those channels, not so effective. But what we can see from the game is that there are some roles in the central midfield tier and the DM tier that also have moved into channels. What does this do? It tells them to, you know, when you're camping in an opponent's half, they might occupy the half spaces that we were talking about earlier. 
to some extent, they are also going to move into the horizontal spaces and try and control that. But however, you know, you have to get further forward rule. So th th this is the reason why the move into channels when it comes to the horizontal aspect of it is a bit, is, is a bit wonky at times. So you can, uh, certain roles like, it explains the behavior of certain roles in the game, where, why they're not perfect. If you got a roaming playmaker, he's got, he can move into, so we got a roaming playmaker, he can move into channels. We got the Mazala, he is already moving into channels. Then we got the Volante. He can move into channels. Roaming Playmaker has got to move into channels. Segundo Volante is moving into channels. So we got two roles at the back. The Roaming Playmaker and the Volante, Volante they can move into the channels. But this really, you got to be very careful when you use, like, okay, if I were to use all these three, this configuration, I'll start praying really hard. Because I don't think uh, when I'm camping in an opponent's half, this is an ideal position because I've got players all doing very strange little movement patterns. So we have to understand what move into channels does in terms of the movement of players on and off the ball. So basically, if you want a player to use move into channels effectively, you're looking at anticipation, you're looking at decision, you're looking at vision, you're looking at work rate, you're also looking at acceleration, you want the first touch for the player to control the ball, you want balance for him to shift left and right so that you know he, he can hold on to the ball and he, he can do something with the ball. Because balance is important because it's the ability of a player to shift the ball from his left foot to his right foot, both on and off the ball. So if his balance is poor, is he can't do much with the ball so now you've got these players attacking the half spaces right we move into channels as an instruction now you got to worry about what about the players who are finding them with the passes decision vision passing first touch so these players and composure composure is incredibly important even for midfielders when a midfielder gets a ball you want him to be able to hold on to the ball and then make the pass so if a player has got, if you've got so many players running into the half spaces, sometimes you end up in situations where you can't find them, which is one of the reasons why one of, my, one of the most popular ways for me to play last season and still is this season is my, my, my Red Faro system. In FM18, um, I was able to successfully create a system which I thought was exploiting the move into channels instruction. Uh, essentially, uh, in FM18, I was using doing this DLF on support, AF on attack. Now, we had a back then we didn't have this guy moving to channels, right? So, uh, what would happen is the DLFS would drop deep, but I on this flank, I've got players that are ex exploring the half channels. I got a Mazala attack who's going to be moving into the channels. Uh, I got AP on support, was told to sit narrow, so you would come inside here. The Mazala will come out here, been, and he will be supported by a wing back. Now, this wing back could easily be changed into inverted wing back. So I get a lot of other options in attack. So I can have an inverted wing back coming out to defend this spot. Or generally, I, what I would have done was inverted wing back come out support this way. Mazala goes into the half spaces to drag players on. This guy pulls in this way. DLF on support will drop in deep, and all this what all this would do was drag an entire defense to the left, right? occupying the fullback, the central defender, midfielders will be occupied. As long as you could keep the ball effectively among these players, what this would mean is. Uh, on this side of the pitch, I would have a deep line playmaker on support. The Mazala, AP on support will hold on to the ball. DLF will come in and the goal scorer extraordinaire would be this player. Because he's moving to the channels too. But with great acceleration, I would always pick a player who cuts inside from the right wing. Who would, play, uh, would be playing with his master foot being the left one. So what this would do would be to open up the space for the AF to cut inside and come in on his left foot. Uh, your players uh, have to be incredibly good at keeping the ball. You're going to have to play high up the pitch. Uh, you're going to have to use a lot of cutbacks to get the goals that you want to get. So while it's possible on FM19, it's a bit more of a challenge because the AI can finally defend narrow playing and higher attacking mentality, which is a change. Because previously, when he played on a higher attacking mentality, it, it would have to be playing a wider setup for his defense. Now he can play on a higher attacking mentality and still maintain a narrow defense. So what this means is he can he can shut down his half spaces, encouraging you to take up wider positions when you attack. So this is one of the reasons why you get a lot of crossing in the game. Uh, if you you because a lot of the AI teams don't defend uh, wide, they all defend most of them. The typical ones are all defending narrow, 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 narrow. You see a shitload of narrow systems in uh, FM19. Which explains why the half spaces and the exploration of half spaces isn't as easy as it was in FM18, but it can still be done.
So movement is a very important aspect of the game. Back in the old days, we had pharaohs and barrows. Pharaohs and barrows in the old days were just forward runs and backward arrows, right? So that's all they were. Uh, as far as moving into the channels was concerned, it was uh, it's it's been it's a facet of the game that's still not perfect. Some of the roles are moving into channels really nicely. Some of the roles they don't really move into the channels the way we like. Vertical, horizontal movement. That means uh, a, a player starting wide and cutting inside. We don't really see enough of that in the game. I know SI are working on it, but this is not just moving to channels, but moving along the channels as well to find space. So things like that and how the uh, whole movement of the players is still something SI are working on. It's not perfect. No way it is, is it perfect because I, we all want to see it do a lot more. Um, but SI understand the challenge and they've targeted move into channels as something that they want to work on. So I hope that you understand the concept of move into channels, how it currently works in FM19, the roles, because I wanted to cover each tier so that you can see how they play off each other. Um, there's roam from position is an important instruction, uh, but move into channels can be a bit confusing because if you liberally apply move into channels and you do, if you don't understand what it does, then sometimes you will find that your players uh, are just harder to find. So you you got to get good players to move into channels and do something with the ball. Now, if you get advanced ball moving into channels, he might go offside a hell of a lot if you get the wrong kind of player. So you got to think about how these roles work together in order for you to control the spaces and exploit them and then exploit them. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short little guide on movement. If you have any questions, please look me up on Twitter at Bustanet or addicted to fm.com, my website. Once again, I'll thank all my patrons for the continued support of this channel. You make this kind of possible for us to the community. You guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.